Recessions, they happen. A surprise layoff can happen. We're going to talk to someone who unfortunately has had such an event happen. We're going to get the full backstory, and we're going to talk about how he is moving through this. Tony, how you doing, man? I'm doing fantastic, Mike, on That's this awesome. great, great morning. There you go. Well, uh, first off, I thank you for reaching out. I think it's important uh, to just have honest discussions, even when that discussion is not necessarily good news. Uh, a surprise layoff uh, is is never good, never fun. Um you know, being, uh, you know, you, you went to work that day or you had a plan and mm -hmm. suddenly the, the chair was kicked out from under you. So why don't you just uh, tell the audience what happened and then how you are kind of moving through all of this? Yeah, absolutely. So a uh, little backstory. I spent 10 years in the U.S. Army as an engineer officer, uh, graduated from West Point, also had my master's courtesy of the U.S. government. Thank you all you taxpayers for helping me uh, go through that that great, great uh, experience. And as I was transitioning out of the military, I joined an internship program to help military uh, veterans go into civilian workforce. And I landed a great role at Blizzard Entertainment. Awesome, awesome experience. Never thought like 14-year-old Tony would have like graduated West Point, Eagle Scout, spend at least 10 years as an engineer officer, go to different places throughout the world, and then land a role at Blizzard Entertainment. I remember spending so many hours on Diablo 2 and World of Warcraft uh, 3, or not World of Warcraft, Warcraft 3, and going through that. Um, yeah. Then we got recently acquired by Microsoft, thought right. it was going to be a great experience. And the day prior to me being laid off, uh, I believe Microsoft had become one of the most uh, valuable companies companies in the world yeah according to their stock evaluation what they were going through and i had given this presentation to help uh, program and project managers on how to communicate more effectively within our organization next day boom 1900 of a list laid off mm. yeah that's uh that's a tough day and and um you know a couple of things for folks out there when, when you when if you are part of a company being acquired I just want you to realize that there's a better than 0% chance a lot of you are going to be asked to leave, right? There's going to be redundancy. Um, lots of times companies, the acquirer is doing it to have meaningful earnings per share growth. And unfortunately, the reality of the game is headcount is the most, is, is the quickest way to add to the bottom line. So for folks out there, if your company is acquired, realize that your chances go up. So uh, sorry that happened to you, Tony. Uh, you get that notice. What happened next? Yeah, fortunately, uh, they gave us a, a three-month notice. So while we were notified in late January, um, it was until the end of March that we were technically laid off. So, and then also given us gave us a severance afterwards too. So for those next three months, I am just sending all these different resumes, doing all these applications, reaching out to different people, nada. And then three months go by and I'm like, okay, I guess I'm laid off. Mm -hmm. And uh, then I get to spend some time with my 15 year old month, month old daughter. I'm just mm -hmm. going to the park with her while my partner is going to do some work at a family home uh, situation as a nurse and i'm just like you know this is this life is not that bad <laughs> See, that, that's, this doesn't suck no it doesn't uh and the most fortunate thing is that at the same time i was exiting the military back in 2022 also got into real estate investing hmm. and so that really um helped quite a bit in my finances because you know my income is much higher than my expenses and then suddenly it's the opposite yeah. direction, but it's so, not so let, zero. It's not. So let me, so let's talk about, so you just got into real estate in 2022. I'm mm -hmm. guessing a house hack, but that's just a guess. What what were we doing? Uh, I was house hacking before I realized I was house hacking. Ah, okay. Yeah. So um, after my divorce uh, several years ago before this event, uh, so mm -hmm. probably around 2018, I invited my parents to live with me. I live up in the Pacific Northwest near mm -hmm. Joint Base Lewis-McChord. And 
had this house that I was renting at the time. Mm -hmm. It's a big house. And my parents were in a different situation. They were downsizing. And I was like, okay. why not move up here? You've always wanted to live in Washington state. I have a lot. We have a lot of family on my father's side up in Canada near mm -hmm. here. My father's from El Salvador, had a lot of refugees and asylum seekers live in the U S and in Canada. Mm -hmm. And to be closer to his mom, my grandmother, and like, why not move up here? And so they moved in with me. And it offset, you know, that rental cost before we actually moved into a home that I mm -hmm. own. And so I was accidentally house hacking for that time. Okay. And then I learned about real estate investing. And mm -hmm. then I'm like, you know what? I'm going to house hack a duplex for a little bit and nice. then fully furnish out both sides so that I could do midterm rentals. Ah, okay. Okay. All right. So 2022 is in 2022. That's the purchase of the duplex. Was that what happened? Correct. Yep. Okay. So 2022, uh, you buy a duplex, you, you do owner rock. So you move into one side, you rent out the other mm -hmm. in the beginning. Um, yes. where at that point, what was it like? Was it, was the other side covering the mortgage because rates were pretty low or, um, where, what, what, what happened to your living expenses at that point though? Just that first couple of months. Um, drastically changed everything. I mean, as always, as always. Right. Um, and so I had priced it where it would cover most of the mortgage, at least one side because midterm right. rentals do substantially better. And I mm -hmm. had met Dion at that point mm -hmm. as well, because he's living up here in the Tacoma, Washington area. And I was like, I'm going to do what he does, but spice it up a little bit because a little more energy, a little more time and decide to go midterm rentals okay. and like um, covers most of the mortgage. One side up here in the Tacoma area, one bedroom, one bath, $2,500 a month. Wow. Yeah. And Damn. that's during like the summertime ish. And now obviously everything has gone up because of inflation. So now it's during the summertime about, I get about $2,700 a month with Airbnb. And that's like mm. my pay payout. That's your cut. Yeah. That's okay. just one side. And my mortgage right. is about 2700 because I got it right when rates were going up. So okay. I closed in May of 2022, but I locked in my rate in April ah, there of you go. 2022, right when rates were going up like a 4.65. Nice. That's, that's Which was awesome. good, which is good now. Oh, absolutely. Back then, good. people were freaking out. So like everything dropped. This yeah. was... The, about those couple of months prior to everybody was still trying to outbid everybody. Mm -hmm. But then I came in right when rates are going up and nobody put it else put in a bid for that property. I was like, yes, I I'm the only one. I, yes, exactly. I love it when the market changes and everybody pulls back because that's when we can, that's when doing the work matters. That's where you can create good deals and make some moves. So, okay. So you get in, you live there, you're basically living for free or almost free. Uh, mm -hmm. when, when did you, when did you move out and turn the other one into uh, a midterm as well? What year was that? Uh, same year, 2022, a okay. couple of months later. Uh, right. and now both and sides where, are renting where'd you very go? well. So where'd you go? Uh, back to my house where my parents live in. Oh, so okay. remember I okay. purchased that yep. single family home a couple of years before right. moved back in there Got and it. like, yeah, they're offsetting the cost on that house. Mm -hmm. I'm still covering most of the mortgage with my W-2 job. And I'm right. still also in the U.S. Army Reserve. So I have two W-2s, oh, nice. those house hack and other okay. rental income. All right. Uh, so where does the story go from here? You, you have the house. You now have a duplex, both midterm rentals. You're, mm -hmm. you're probably you know netting a couple of grand a month, which doesn't suck. Uh, wh where do you go next, Tony? Uh, then I start... Uh, operating other people's airbnbs oh okay yeah so uh army buddy of mine he lives in hawaii now with his girlfriend nice. he had been for a little bit he had a couple of rentals out here in washington state and he's like tony i see what you're doing over here with this why don't you run it for this uh adu that i have i'm like sure i'll do it uh he had for probably about nine months he had fully renovated this cool house that he turned into a ADU, one bedroom, one bath in the same zip code hmm. right outside the base. 
and I was like, I want you to do what you're doing with your place with my place. And I'm like, okay. I can do that. Fully Fine. furnish it, make it decorated myself. Uh, that's one skill I never thought I'd have leaving the military as an engineer officer is learning how to interior, interior decorate. Interior design, yeah. Apparently I do it well enough where many uh, females, that's who I was targeting, mostly females uh -huh. or travel nurses and or traveling couples with pets. It's one thing I know that Dion really, uh, really hounds on, mm. quote unquote, hounds on having pets in your yep. rentals i allow any sort of pet just no puppies got it yeah and nobody has really no pet has really damaged yeah. anything it's been yeah. going well for two years ish now okay right. and it's been going well with that and so now i operate other people's airbnbs i take my cut and i just yep. do everything for them nice and have okay. that little cash flow it's you know considered active income it's not passive income for sure. But it works out until okay. the point where I was laid off and my income is no longer zero. Right. But it's not it's not the same as it was, but it's not zero. Okay. And that's like the saving grace, I would say, during the experience until I got uh, hired on as a consultant is, yeah. you know, just working those little pieces, those little wins until, yeah, I'm not FI yet. Right. But the saving grace of getting into real estate really really assisted with that. Yeah. So when I look at this situation um, and I kind of break it down for the audience, right? Uh, first and foremost, if you're out there and your only source of income is your W-2, is your job, that is an extremely risky situation to be in, right? So I, I would argue the most risky, especially in a recession, especially if your company gets acquired. I mean, it's just like the risk level should go through the roof. Second, uh, the opportunity to house hack or take your largest expense X taxes and bring that down, if not to zero, to something you know meaningful, is a cheat code. It's just a freaking cheat code. Second, or third, I guess, uh, figuring out the model that works for you, whether it's long-term rentals like Dion being the lazy landlord, whether that's mid-term rentals with you know uh, uh, furnished Airbnbs for travel nurses in your case, uh, you know, finding what works in your market, your buy box, awesome. Third or fourth, the, the idea that you could take your experience, document success, and then have others say, hey, can you give me some of that? Like your friend in Hawaii. That's awesome, right? That that just, that's the big thing to me is I've always told people document your journey. Because when you do that, eventually, and it won't take very long, you'll have opportunities to monetize that. Now, in my case, it was raising private money. In your case, it's creating another income stream. Um, but yeah, it's, it just unlocks so much so that if you do get that unfortunate layoff notice, it's not the complete disaster that it could be. It's I mean, it's never fun, but it's also not a complete disaster. Is all that fair? <laughs> yeah, absolutely. And to expand on number three, uh like documented your journey, I didn't do a whole lot of documentation, but what I did was sharing my story with yeah. other people exactly, um, emphatically. And I would go to different real estate meetups all the way from Olympia to uh, Seattle and Bellevue, which is like a whole hour and a half difference mm -hmm. depending upon traffic up here. If you know the Pacific Northwest, I-5 can get congested during those uh, travel times during uh, rush hour. But I would go to two, three times a week, go to different real estate meetups and meet with different people and talk about these things to where people know you, you're sharing your story mm -hmm. and sharing that abundance, like may, maybe not in money wise, but in value and yeah. whom you are as a person and what you can provide to the table. That's exactly what it's all about. You, should, This is not about being a secret agent. Tell everybody, tell everybody what you're doing. Right. And if you're just starting out, tell everybody, don't lie. They'll figure it out. But if you have something that's working, tell everybody, go to meetups. Like I, one of the rules, one of my seven rules is meet two new people a week. Right. Tell everybody your buy box, tell everybody what you're doing. Ask questions, be a good human, listen more than you talk. It's, um, there's a lot of, a lot of value in that wisdom. So, uh, so where are we today? So paint the picture today. It sounds like you've got a consulting gig. 
Yes, I work as a consultant at PACCAR, um, the okay. long haul truck manufacturer in their IT department mm -hmm. and uh, helping develop a new product that they are uh, developing with their trucks. And so okay. something I never thought I'd be doing again, uh, working for a car ma a vehicle manufacturer. Mm. But it's an interesting experience um, working in that and learning and getting to know how hardware integrates with software. It's a very nice. different dynamic and mm -hmm. place to be, but it's very flexible and allows me time to go to my meetups, mm. be paid uh, fairly well as well, nice. and doing what I love and getting to where I need to be. Right. So, uh, so you have a consulting gig. You still are uh, doing reserves. Is that right? Uh, I am. Yes. Okay. So you're in the reserves. You still are. You still, um, you still have that one duplex that's fully furnished midterm rental. That I do. And you still are uh, helping your friend uh, who lives in Hawaii. That's still going on. Oh yeah. And he's actually said he wants to partner on another deal. So it's just like ah, finding the right see? deal to partner in on to like make it work because yeah. he knows the value proposition of living in a high cost living in area yep. that everybody wants to live in that has yep. very diverse uh, economic uh, drivers that mm -hmm. is very much expanding. So it's very like, cool, let's try to find cool. another place. Got it. Nice. All right. So, uh, so now we know where you've been, where you are, where are you going? What's, what's next for Tony? Uh, paying off some of my credit card debt that I incurred during that time, because like I said, while it was inverse now trying to get back to where my income is higher as it was and paying off that credit card debt. Are and, we talking uh, work... 10 grand plus, or what are we talking? Uh, yes. Okay. Um, right. So, you, yes. so you have some work to do. I do have okay. some work to do. Um, but also like taking consideration what Dion said, I think a couple of, a couple of weeks ago in one of his videos was, yeah, like, one of his buddies like, yeah, I have all this debt. It's like, we'll start saving for investing too. Just pay the minimum what you can working for your next investment. I'm like, okay, need to do that. So looking for my next house hack and a lot of homes have come on the market and or staying on the MLS for Sitting a on very the long time. Dude, the, the market's going to get really slow, really slow, I think, uh, which is going to mean the people who pay attention who follow up, who know the numbers, who write disrespectful offers. I just want to, I mean, I suspect if you do what I think you'll do, you're going to be tracking the market. You're going to, you're going to write some disrespectful offers. You're going to get one of those just like Dion did, but you're going to have to follow up three, four, five, six times because they're probably not motivated the first time. They mm -hmm. get a little more motivated the second and if somebody has to sell, I mean, there are people, because I, I talked to Beth Traverso, top 1% agent there. I talked to Dion. Sometimes they just got to sell, right? They want to go to see their grandchildren and they want to whatever, and they own it free and clear. At some point, they're like, ah, just get rid of this headache. Yeah, it's coming. It is coming fast. And uh, it's interesting too, uh, depending upon the small multifamily property or even single family homes, um, so like my, like I mentioned, my partner works in healthcare, um, at home living facilities, mm -hmm. usually a single family home that's been modified. And a yep. lot of those are coming on the market because the, mm. the, something if people are working, looking into that area too, is that because a lot of boomers and then older generation is looking to retire, but they can't because it's so hard expensive right now to retire they can't and they can't move out of their homes or they can't afford those expensive well expensive to them uh at home nurse to come and take care of them and so a lot of them are either staying at the home that they lived in and or living with family and having family help them they're not mm -hmm. moving to these facilities they're not moving to these single family homes that have been converted. And a lot of these single family homes have actually come on the market because they're not profitable anymore at the yeah. way that they were looking at. So it's also a thing of thinking, where what is my exit strategy? Yep. And I like coming it. down to having multiple ones. And I do this with my video with Dion, is that I it's something as a as a risk. Um not divert risk, but to lower my risk. Mitigation, I always, risk mitigation. mitigation. Thank you. That's a great word for it is uh, mitigate my risk by always pricing 
the houses I'm looking at for yield mm -hmm. is looking at that Section 8 pricing. Oh, if perfect. If I can't get that Section 8 pricing and it's not profitable. Don't do it. Yeah. I'm not going to do it. That is such yeah, control the downside. I wish more people did that. A lot of people in real estate focus on the upside, appreciation, value add, discount. No, 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 no. You've got to control the downside. So if you can at minimum cash flow with an acceptable yield at section eight and everything from there is gravy, genius. Just absolute genius. Love that. Yeah. And their coastal section eight are always going up. And like in my area, BAH, uh, basic allowance for housing is going up because soldiers need a place to live. If you're like me, like military and or former military, you're living near a big base as well. A lot of bases do not have enough housing to accommodate all the soldiers, airmen, Marines, Navy, Space Force people in that area. And they have to go look in the greater area that's around them. I and love that. I love if that. you're living in this area, there's just, they're missing housing by tens of thousands. Wow. So let, let's kind of wrap this up. So if you were, if you were speaking to a white collar employee, all they have is their job. That's all they have. What are some tidbits or advice? I guess we can assume they have some interest in real estate. What's some advice from Tony to them that they should think about doing over the next six, nine, 12 months? What, what would you tell someone like that? I would start with look at themselves. I mean, you, you, have gone back and said, what is my level zero? Mm. And look at the next couple of steps, taking that that mindset of what Mike Zuber talks about, what Dave Ramsey talks about, and any others, like what are my steps I need to get to that place? Engineer, right. so I'm always very systems minded. What is the process? How do I get there? Is this something I can do? If other people have done it, I can do it too. Exactly. And having that mindset, I think is probably the base of the level zero. Right. I, I, I love that. I just want to echo one thing. One of the reasons um, One Rental at a Time YouTube channel exists in the format it exists with all the millionaires that come back each week is because you never know which millionaire is going to click with somebody. Because I have a story that's amazing, but it's only my story, right? Anna Kelly, different story. Jonathan Twomley, Dion, Matt, you know, it's just... That's one of the things I love about this channel is so many people are willing to give us an hour a week to, share the, to continually share their story. Casey and just the list goes on and on. So, all right. I love that. I love I love that to start with. Where, where do you go next? Let's give them one more piece of advice. Where to go next? Uh, understand what the process is and do not be afraid to take those next steps. But I'm very much uh, an ambivert. So I like having my alone time. Mm. Also like that extroverted in this, I need people time too. Just don't be afraid to pick up the phone, doing that yeah. millennial thing and just picking up the phone and just calling somebody because you never know if you're going to have it make a great connection, made a uh, lifelong friend or have your next deal and making things happen. I love that. I love that. So uh, I guess I'll close with this, kind of put a cherry on top of the Sunday. When you look at the plan, when does FI kind of seem realistic to you. Have, you. have you kind of looked at that and think about when you might get there? I have. Uh, my plan right now is within six years. Uh, I love the that. FI, that's about the time I'll be 20 years with the military time period with Genius. Uh, the active duty plus my uh, reserve. Unfortunately, reserves, like you cannot tap into retirement until about 59 and a half, depending upon okay. how much points you get. Mm -hmm. Um but like, that is my plan is okay. get there that quickly and just working, really right. working backwards because that's one thing they teach us in the military and some leadership and management uh, systems too is knowing what the big plan is and doing mm -hmm. what's known as reverse engineering, backwards planning. You have your goal. What are the steps, not just to get there, but from that point of view as well. And I know I need to have this much how do I get to that point working backwards? And so it's also working both ways and understanding that process, talking with people like Mike, Dion, and many others, and figuring out what works for you with your personality, your resources, and your time, and your family situation, and having that support system to get you there. Love it. And of course, folks, if you don't know what FI is, it's financial independence. Didn't want to just throw acronyms around. Tony, if somebody wanted to reach out, follow you, do you have a social media present we can point them to? 
Uh, yes, I do. Uh, so you can come join our group on Facebook, uh, Tacoma FI. Dion oh, nice. started that group, but I pretty much run it for him now because he nice. is the lazy landlord. He's like, I'm going to pass <laughs> it off to somebody else. Go, right? Dion. <laughs> you can come uh, meet us there. I'm uh, fairly active on that uh, Facebook group. Come meet us. We are usually meeting the first week of every month. If you're nice. local in the area, you can always reach out to me there. You probably you might see Millennial Mike on there too sometimes. Uh, I know he's been a wall for the past busy. couple months, but he's yeah. super crazy working night shift and doing all the things he's doing. So you might yeah. see him there. But also a great group of people who just love the chat. All regular people who want to make it to uh, their lifelong dream. I love it, Tony. You're amazing, man. Thank you for reaching out. Shout out Dion, Millennial Mike, and everybody else. Take care. All right. See ya.